So tonight I'm going to be showing basically how to do the water pump and thermostat changeover on any 2006 to like 2012 or 2011, whatever year the E90 and E91 stopped. 325 or 328, this applies to the wagon and the sedan as well as the coupe. Um, procedure is very similar for the 1 Series. You can even use it as a basic guide for uh, an X3, <coughs> sorry, an X3, a Z4, uh, 5 Series. X5, basically anything that's got the N series 51, 52, 54 engine. Um, this car is a 2007 328i sport wagon. So uh, I'm going to get started here. First step underneath the car, you've got a lot of plastic protective plates. Most of these are either 8mm nuts or uh, quarter tin Phillips. So start by undoing the rear first working your way forward, um, taking those off, setting them aside, and be sure not to lose any of your hardware because it is important. So, both skid plates are off. Um, next step, uh, I'll do, I'll show you the two next steps in a row here because they're all 10 millimeters. You're gonna have <clears throat> this bracket, which is just a support bracket for the plastic piece you just removed. Uh, loosen this 10 millimeter. You can either loosen it, move it out of the way, or take it all the way off. I'm gonna remove it completely same with this side. After you're done with that, you've got your power steering cooler hose. Loosen and remove this. You may have to hold this dampener with a 17 millimeter. This is a 10 millimeter here. Once that's off, uh, simply again put it out of the way. Just kind of drag it, put it over here, maybe use a bungee cord. After that, I'll show you, but uh, the water pump is up in there. Now that you have the power steering cooler out of the way, um, the only correction I want to make, this rubber noise dampener here, sorry, not noise, just vibration, uh, that's not a 17, that's a 21 on my car. Last one of these I did was a 335, that was a 17. Uh, next step now, there are four 13 millimeter bolts. Two there, two there. Those hold the sway bar on. Uh, they're actually nuts. Just loosen them, take them off. The sway bar will swing down and sit on the tie rod ends of the steering rack. Sorry, it's a little hard to see. The sway bar was mounted up here. And honestly, you can just pull it down a little bit. It'll come down, sit on the end links here. That's fine. Um, now you can actually, if you look up in here, see your water pump and thermostat. The thermostat is here, bolted to the water pump with these two 10 millimeters. You can see the two lower aluminum bolts that hold the water pump assembly to the block. And the uh, electronic pigtail back there. Uh, step one, take the electrical connector out of there. Step two, unplug the pump here. And then uh, you may have to undo a ground cable here if you have a 28. I don't know if the 25s have this. Actually, instead of undoing that ground, pull the pump power and then your electrical map thermostat connector down here off. And you can just tuck it away up here out of the way. So you don't need to completely remove it. Next step here, I'm gonna undo uh, this hose clamp a little bit and uh, this one too, if I can reach it, as well as that. Just start loosening this kind of stuff up. I'm also gonna pull the two lower E12 E-Torx bolts. Um, this is going to drain a lot of coolant. My engine's still hot because I just drove the car here. I highly recommend waiting a couple hours before you do yours because, um, it, again, it's very hot. Um, but do have a catch can ready. It's going to dump, I would say, a gallon or so of coolant. So next up, we're back in the front of the car here. For reference, we're up here. Uh, this is the back side of the water pump. Up here is the final E12 bolt. Um, I've got my E12 socket, my U-joint, and socket extensions out here. Uh, you can make it easier for yourself and undo the quick disconnect on this hose first and slip it through that way, but there's no real need to do it that way. Um, so I'm not going to. I'm gonna put my ratchet on here, undo that bolt. The water pump will now be free. I've got the two, there's an upper and a lower hose on the water pump. They're both loose. The other end goes to this thermostat housing, which will stay in place once that bolt is out. So the upper bolt is loose in there. Uh, the pump is now completely free to come out. Uh, it doesn't take much to wiggle it out. Just kind of pull the impeller side down and out and then you'll have a pretty clear view of the thermostat assembly. 
So here are the water pumps. Old one obviously on the left, new one on the right. This is a Pierberg unit as well. It's exactly the same as the old one. This one actually says 2006 on it still, so that was definitely the original pump. This one's 2014. These are the uh, old bolts that mount the pump housing to the block. These are aluminum. They're one-time use. Um, don't reuse these. I've tried, they do tend to lose their integrity. You might get away with reusing them once, but it's just not worth it. This bolt kit is like $3 brand new from the dealer. Um, there it is, three little bolts. Most water pumps you buy these days are coming with the bolts anyway, since they're required. Um, new thermostats there. Hop back over to the car. You can see the old thermostat assembly. Sorry, I'm trying to make it focus here. There it is. So, uh, I've got the hose that goes straight to the water pump. That I'm actually just gonna leave on here, take it off, transfer it out of the car. One big quick disconnect back here, and then you've got a smaller one up here on the back as well, up there, pointing with that finger. So this style clip, actually I'll just get a hose off the shelf and show you guys how those work since it's kind of tight quarters in here. So, here's an example of that quick disconnect connector. You see that silver piece, you slide a pick basically, or a standard screwdriver, in that little gap right there, and you pull up. Uh, you do not remove it completely from the connector. Once you've pulled that up, just leave it on the hose, you can then start prying, wiggling, getting that uh, connector off of there. Um, there is one this size on the back of the thermostat housing, and there's one about this size as well. So, I got the big and small quick disconnects disconnected. Uh, the big one, it's going to spill quite a bit of coolant. Uh, keep your catch can underneath it. The little one, not so bad. That one just popped right off. Uh, at this point, your thermostat housing has one more standard hose clamp connector on the back. You're going to have to finagle around to get that one loose, but pull it off, remove it, and then take your thermostat out of the car. So, there we have the old thermostat and the new one. At this point, transfer over your water pump crossover hose in the same orientation that it is currently on the thermostat and uh, at this point we're going to begin reinstallation but uh, that's completely the reverse of uh, removal so I might cover little tips and tricks here along the way I'm going to cover torque specs on the aluminum bolts, the new ones as well as the bleeding procedure but I'm going to go ahead and throw this back in and uh, I'll come back again. New thermostats in, one thing I want to make mention of uh, be sure that rear clamp is in a place where you can tighten it. Um, when I took this car apart, it was factory assembled still, and they don't always pay attention to where the clamps are. Uh, and the only other note is, on the thermostat especially, buy the original equipment part. I've done a couple of these with Haman, H-A-M-A-N-N, -N, brand thermostats, and they just fit like crap. These hose connects take two people to shove together. They're just not quite right. Once they're together, they work, truth be told, just fine. But this is a Whaler, W-A-H-L-E-R, Waller, however you pronounce it. This is excellent, this is O-E. And uh, the pump itself is a Pierberg, also O-E. It's good stuff, so that's my two cents here. Uh, as you're putting it back together, make sure the harness stays above these hoses. It really wants to kind of slink down in here. That's not where it wants to be. So, uh, at this point I'm going to throw the clamp back on here so I don't lose it. I'm going to put the pump back in, mount the thermostat to the pump, and then kind of put everything back together, and then before I uh, tighten it up I'll come back and go over it again. So, shiny new water pumps installed. I've got that bolt hand threaded. Got these two hand threaded. Harness is where it needs to be, over that loop. Uh, I've got the upper all the way seated. I've got the lower all the way seated. Uh, I'm just about to put the bolts in here. However, it's sitting just perfect right now. Everything lined up great. Um, the electrical connectors will come afterwards. I think right now, first thing I'm going to do is tighten down all these E12s, and then I'll come back for the clamps. Coming back briefly, I forgot to mention the torque uh, on these bolts is 7.37 foot-pounds. Um, I'm going to do 8. Ooh, throw caution to the wind. Intermediate bolts are in. Um, I don't know the torque spec on those, just good and tight. Got those all torqued to eight foot pounds. At this point, I'm gonna go for my two remaining hose clamps. I'm going to plug the MAP sensor plug back into the thermostat, 
and I'm going to plug the electrical connector back into the water pump. One final piece of advice, trick tip, whatever. Uh, once your plugs are back in, go get this metal retaining clasp off your old pump and snap it on your new one so you have a nice uh, harness holder. All the clamps are all tightened down, I've double checked. Next step, I'm going to, uh, before I put the sway bar or anything back in, I'm gonna put the car down, fill it with coolant, I'll show you how to do that. Um, and then I'll show you the bleeding procedure. After that, we're gonna come back, check for leaks. And if there's no leaks, put it all back together and go take her for a drive. So, for the fill procedure, come up, undo the cap off your coolant reservoir, and open your bleed screw. In fact, in my case, I might just take it all the way out because it makes it easier to see. At this point, start filling coolant until you see coolant coming out of here. Uh, this works on a cold engine only. It will not work on a hot engine. Once you see coolant coming out of here, immediately put the bleed screw back in, stop putting coolant in, put the cap back on, and then we'll bleed it. So that part's a little difficult to film, but I was adding coolant until I saw coolant come out of here. Put the bleed screw back in, put the cap back on. Now it's time to bleed it. So for this, we need to actually get in the car. <clears throat> and the procedure is hit start and then we're going to turn the climate there we go going to turn the climate all the way to hot we're going to turn defroster on and we're going to hold the gas pedal to the floor for 10 seconds Right now, the water pump is spinning up, forcing coolant through the entire cooling system. You can let go of the gas pedal. And this process takes, I think, a minute and a half. I can't remember exactly, but you can do this multiple times if you like. What I'll do, I'll give it the minute and a half. I'll turn the car back off, essentially. I'm going to go open the coolant reservoir and the blade screw, top it off the same way we filled it the first time. And at that point, I'm going to uh, um, put it back up in the air, check it for leaks. If it's uh, not leaking, put everything back together, take it for a test drive. And um, when you're on your first test drive, leave the heat on maximum and make sure you've got it um, so your vents are on so you should feel it. If you feel heat coming out and it's hot, you're good to go. Um, if you don't feel heat and or you're getting a warning message about temperature, you've got air bubbles and you need to do the bleed procedure and probably add more coolant again. Um, I'll, uh, I'll cover that again as I go. Everything looks hunky-dory down here. No leaks. Um, the bleed procedure uh, definitely helped freed up about, I don't know, four or five more ounces of coolant. I have since topped it up, uh, closed it again, bled it again, no leaks. So at this point, I'm going to put everything back together, starting with the sway bar, the 13 mils, the four of those, followed by the power steering cooler, single 10 mil nut, and then tons of plastic underneath the car. After I'm done with that, I'll set her down and we'll go for a quick test drive. And here we are, done. At this point, I'm gonna take my trouble light out, set it down, go for a ride. So here we are, engine running. Um, keep the heater set at maximum. You don't have to have the fan set at maximum. At this point, I'm going to shut off foot and uh, windshield heat just to get the most. I'm going to turn my stratified air adjustment in the middle. That knob below the door locks all the way to red. And uh, I'm just going to go for a little drive. Make sure the heat stays hot. Make sure I don't get any warning messages on the uh, OBC here. And uh, if we're good, I'll come back and we're all done. Saved ourselves a whole bunch of money.